At that time, I began the program with a simple question. What will be the jobs of the future? And what type of training will you need to get one? My colleague, Tim Richard, and I then attempted to answer the question by interviewing Dr. Mazera, an Oakland County Community College president, Dick Thompson, whose schools had just been awarded two competitive state grants. Well, with millions of dollars at stake, we should have known that a little controversy was just around the bend. But first, to put the upcoming and very outspoken interview with Dr. Ivory in its proper perspective, we need you to look back with us at an excerpt from the original interview in February. Tim Richard, who is now retired from the Observer and Eccentric newspapers, begins the question. Dick Thompson, you got $5 million from the Jobs Commission for an M-Tech Center at the Auburn Hills campus. What will you do with it? We're going to uh, use it as a, a connecting device. Uh, I suppose you might call it a, 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 an intellectual uh, shopping center where uh, students can come from high school. Uh, they can come from uh, unemployment. They can come from a position of underemployment, uh, or they can go on to a senior institution. And what will they learn? They're going to learn uh, variations on in, in information technology and uh, a number of skills that will get them into uh, career path jobs. Uh, we're aiming at minimum uh, twenty to $25,000 entry <coughs> earning levels. And, and these are paths that they can put together in a degree format if they wish to, and they can come back again and again and, and retrain and expand their capacities. So information technology and Dr. Mazzara at Henry Ford, what will you do with that five million? Well, the five million, we're using it to match another million eight from the private sector to build a technical training center in a community about 12 miles south of us in Woodhaven, Woodhaven, Michigan. Mm -hmm. And one of our principal partners is the Ford Motor Company, and we are proposing to build a technical training center there that would serve the general community, including Ford workers, and would be for upgrading the technical skills of incumbent workers for Ford and other companies in the area, and offer computer technology programs for the general public, particularly the younger uh, persons. And we're doing that in partnership with Cisco, company and Cisco is a manufacturer of internet equipment. They are to internet equipment what Microsoft is to internet software and so uh, there's an investment there as well. So we'll be retraining current workers to make sure that the jobs are there for them and also training their children and their neighbors children to prepare the jobs of the future. How much money is Ford Motor Company putting into this venture? Well there are two principal partners Ford Motor Company and the UAW are putting in about 1.3 million dollars of, of the 1.3 million 1 million is cash and that will go to help equip the building. Uh, we're using state money to do the actual construction mm -hmm. and the infrastructure. Uh, the UAW Ford is investing a million dollars in cash in instructional equipment, which will be used by everybody in that building. And Ford Motor Company is donating the land for that, which is valued at another uh, three quarters, about a third of a million. Then an additional half million would be coming from donations, largely equipment from other companies whose employees will be trained or will expect to hire graduates of the programs offered at the Woodhaven HFCC Technical Center. So there's a real dollar investment beyond words. It's real dollars, real land, real commitment. And the community of Down River is eager to get it started. And Ford Motor Company has volunteered to, to do the project management for this construction at no cost to the college because they want it up and running not only for their own workforce training, but to help train the people in the Down River area. Sounds like a good idea, right? Well, not if you're the president of Wayne County Community College. When we return, my candid conversation with this man who has instructed his attorneys to go to war with the school this man represents. I'm Chuck Stokes, and this is Spotlight on the News. Welcome back to Spotlight. Our topic, the controversy between Henry Ford and Wayne County Community Colleges. Is it a case of sour grapes or breaking the law? I put that question to Dr. Curtis Ivory. I think what we should do, um, all of us who've been involved in this discussion, uh, this debate, if you will, is sit back, take a deep breath, and really try to appreciate what the real issue is here. We're not talking about who knew what when, um, we're talking about a facility that uh, could be, if the project moves forward, a facility with, that would be constructed illegally uh, within the boundaries of the Wayne County Community College District. 
we're not opposed to educating our constituencies. This is very important. Chuck, uh, roughly 54% of our population, 50% of our, 54% of our jobs will require um, education beyond high school. In the year 2001, 68% of our jobs will require some education beyond high school. So certainly we embrace the notion of education and training. What we're simply saying in this instance that Dearborn, um, Henry Ford Community College should construct a facility uh, within the boundaries of their district, which is Dearborn and Dearborn Heights. If they are to go beyond those districts, certainly uh, it would be done by a waiver by this institution, by the Wayne County Community College District at the invitation. But if this happens legally, we would be greatly jeopardized. This right, let, let, let's, so that the audience stays with us on this, Henry Ford Community College the main campus is situated in the city of Dearborn. Dearborn. Correct. This facility, this training facility that they will be building or hope to be building, will not be in Dearborn, but will be in the city of Detroit. No, it would be it would be in the city of Woodhaven, which is roughly 4.7 miles from uh, our Down River campus, which has 2,500 students. And again, we're talking about something that goes well beyond the parameters defined by the Jobs Commission. We're not talking about simply uh, a training program. We're not talking about a short-term training course and or program. We're talking about, uh, and, and let me, when we talk about programs, this happens frequently within the community college. Um, um, well, that's um, what I was going to say. Um, this is not the first community. time one community college has gone outside their district to build something. No, 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 Abs correct? no, 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 that's absolutely incorrect. If this happens in terms of the facility, we're talking about constructing a facility on 14 acres uh, that's roughly 30,000 square feet that could, could conceivably, be with, within two years, be a comprehensive community college with the ability to offer programs to the general public, with the ability to offer, the, offer social rewards degrees, as well as um, certificate programs in all areas. There's nothing that would limit their ability to offer those programs. This but has there never, will, but this there has will, never happened. But Chuck. Dr. Ivory, there will be people who will say, look, as long as it is helping young people achieve an education, who should care exactly where it is situated, where it is located? The Chuck. bottom line should be about educating young people, and, and correct? We are, and, we are, and we're committed to that notion and that process, Chuck. But in 1966, uh, we um, um, had um, uh, put in place what's called the Community College Act of 1966. Uh, that act clearly delineates or outlined districts for every community college within uh, the state. Now, think about this for a moment. Chuck, if we don't adhere to the law, if we don't live by the law, then every institution within the, st within the state could conceivably build facilities outside of their district. And this could conceivably change the landscape of higher education in the state of Michigan and in the state, uh, in, in the country for, for, for that matter. Now this is the first time this has happened. The first time in of all the five uh, grants um, uh, technology centers awarded, yeah. only one uh, will be constructed outside of its own boundaries. Okay, you're pursuing legal action. Absolutely. It. All right, let me read you something that Andrew Mazzara wrote in the newspaper not too long ago, he said, quote, it is unfortunate that a grant process that has been played out in the public arena since last summer is now being challenged as, quote, illegal and unethical by representatives of Wayne County Commun Community College. Chuck, we, we never had any information um, relative to that facility being um, constructed. We never had one telephone call from uh, the Henry Ford Community College uh, uh, administration. Now, I made several calls to after I was informed of something like this was was uh, uh, possibly being discussed. I made several phone calls to the president of Henry Ford. Not one call, phone call was returned. Uh, we've never had any contact from uh, the Ford Corporation. Are the two of you talking now? Uh, we've had um, uh, at least one discussion that was not what I would consider very fruitful. Let me just make this point. We have a lot of very innocent institutions uh, being compromised as a result of this process. The Ford Corporation have been very supportive of education over the years. They have been a model for trying to support and be proactive in terms of supporting institutions. UAW as well. But I think that, that, that uh, Henry Ford had a fundamental responsibility to come forward and say, look, this is what we're proposing. This may be illegal. 
Uh, certainly we know that it's unethical, but we have challenges thing, and they had a responsibility to come forward and say those things. They, to date, um, uh, uh, has not done that. And that's critical. The people involved need to know that this is um, uh, clearly an illegal act. All right, Dr. Ivory, we have to rush to a commercial break. When we come back, we'll pick up on this point and talk about a couple other things there at Wayne County Community College. Stay with us. Dr. Curtis Ivory, the president of Wayne County Community College, our guest today on Spotlight. Dr. Ivory, let me pick up on this controversy. Wayne County Community College did or did not apply for this original grant of $5 million. We were, taught, we were part of two applications. Um, we were not um, a part of the application process you that one uh, with Focus Hope for the one with um, um, the Woodhaven plant down river. We were part of one with, with Focus Hope and as well as Jackson Community College. All right, there will be some people, and I can bet you some people affiliated with Henry Ford Community College will say, "Look, you didn't apply for it outright by yourself. You didn't get it. Isn't this just sour grapes on Wayne County Community College's part, Johnny? Come lately." Absolutely not. We're talking about two separate issues. Um, certainly, we applaud Henry Ford for um, having uh, accomplished um, uh, the, the, this, this achievement. Uh, but we're talking about the fundamental right uh, not to have an institution move within your tax and district to in some way compromise that local funding base. That's the critical issue here. We're not in a position of trying to defend those who would suggest issues that are peripheral to the main issue here. We didn't apply for the grant um, that one that, that, that yielded the result for, 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 for Henry Ford, but that's not an issue. Well, we why, applied that. Why, why didn't you apply for it? Well, it was not, we were not aware of it. We were not aware of it. We were never approached. No notices went no, absolutely. out? Absolutely. No, no, nothing. We never we were never appro approached, uh, approached by... Um, How did everybody else Ford find out about no, it? No, 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 no. You need to understand something. Mm -hmm. Henry Ford Corporation supposedly... Um, I'm sorry. The Ford Corporation supposedly approached Henry Ford about this particular grant opportunity. And that's certainly uh, their right to do so. And they have, they've had a long relationship with uh, Henry Ford Community College. Mm -hmm. Henry Ford has a charter, and their charter would suggest that they bill within their own boundaries. There's nothing there that would allow them to move beyond those boundaries. I think that we will be vindicated in the end um, um, through the legal system. I'm sure of that. But in terms of the twist, uh, the things that have been suggested in terms of process, wait, the process was an honorable process. We're not, we're not, that's not a debate. Mm. But I want us to move us back to the I central see, issue here. I hear what you're saying. That is that there's a law, 1966 Act 189-105, that that succinctly states that one, that another institution cannot construct a facility in another institution boundaries. That's that will compromise our local funding base, Chuck. That's the essential issue. Dr. Ivory, let me ask you a succinct question that may wrap all this up. Is the bottom line here from your perspective that if this facility is built where Henry Ford Community College wants it built, we support that it, it will threaten the existence of Wayne County Community College and a few years from now, there, people from the state and others may say, we don't need that university anymore. Uh, well, is, well, that, that, is that, that a concern that, that, that you have? That, that could be part of it. But, it. but legally, Chuck, if that institution is allowed to go forward, we would, we would not be able to preclude other institutions from constructing facilities within our boundaries if that happens legally. Let me say finally that we're certainly open to collaboration. We think that the center is a wonderful idea conceptually. We think the governor was really on target when he designated uh, monies to develop training centers. We would be willing to collaborate with Henry Ford. We're certainly open to that. We think it would make sense to, to, to have those services available to the constituencies that we serve. We're simply saying, look, if you're gonna do that, there's a process to, in, order that, in order to get that done. But if you pursue it the way you're currently pursuing it, it's illegal and unethical, and it will compromise the very existence of a very fine institution. Dr. Ivory, before you took over as president of Wayne County Community College, 
that university stayed in the media, stayed in the paper, uh, and on television, and on radio, uh, in the midst of controversy. It was one thing after another. That seemed to quiet down, and we didn't hear any type of negative stories about Wayne County Community College for quite a period of time. And it wasn't until this controversy that came along that you sort of ended up back in the media. Um, I would assume that a lot of that is because of your leadership there. As you reflect on your three years there, what do you think has been the hallmark of your administration? I think we've been committed. I, I said early on that uh, we wanted to be among the best community colleges in the state, if not the nation, and we've been committed to that notion. We've worked off hard to get there. We've been accountable. We've been responsive and responsible. We've added 17 new programs in three short years. Uh, we have a very solid budget. We've passed two um, millage campaigns, one in 1996, shortly after I arrived, and another in November of 1998 by overwhelming, the permanent mill that is, by overwhelming uh, by uh, uh, a huge wide margin. That has never happened. So that, that would suggest that we have a, a lot of support out there. A lot of people believe in what we're trying to do. We serve some 19,000 students a year. We serve, um, and oftentimes um, one might say a very, um, um, it, it's a very diverse population and, and we're doing a good job, uh, but I would attribute to the success to the Board of Trustees. Um, I have um, um, absolutely worked with uh, some of the most outstanding trustees in the country and, and a very excellent and excellent uh, faculty and staff. So we're doing a lot of things right and no, and you allude to this current controversy. Look, Chuck, we're not proposing to build a facility within another institution's borders. We're simply here trying to do our job and do it well. But we, we have an obligation and a responsibility to um, um, fight this matter legally. Two, two final questions while we have you. You used to be Commissioner of Human Resources. Human Services. Uh, Human Services under then Governor Bill Clinton back in Arkansas. You were in his first administration. As you reflect and look back on his tenure, not so much in Arkansas, but now in the White House, has he been a good president? on education issues? I think he's been an excellent president on, on education issues. That's the, you answered that nice and succinctly. <laughs> Shorter than anything thus far. <laughs> and on the Detroit Public Schools, I know that that is not something that you have any control over whatsoever. But as a lifetime educator, looking at the controversy, and this has been one heck of a controversy that we've all been covering for the last several months, where does Dr. Curtis Ivory come down on this? Was the right decision made in terms of changing the laws in Lansing to put the Detroit schools in the hands of the mayor of the city of Detroit? <clears throat> Chuck, let me let me just say that. Um, and I know it's putting you on that, the hot seat that, a little bit. Well, that's, but, that's okay. But, that, that's okay. Uh, but a lot of the students coming out of there will be coming to your institution. Managing an urban institution, K through 12 institution, is one of the most difficult propositions in the world. Um, Detroit is not unique in terms of some of the issues that, that they've been confronted with. Certainly we needed to address uh, reform in a very ambitious and aggressive manner. Um, we've done that. Let me suffice to say that um, um, we've made some decisions. Um, uh, you have people who, who, who will come down on all sides of that, that issue. Uh, Are you comfortable? Today, today, today I'm here to say that um, anything that I can do to help make this uh, a better place for all of our young people, uh, if I, what I, anything I can do to Do you to think the current board is headed in the right direction? I think they have a tough job, and, um, and I'll lend support in any way I can. All right. That's that quite answer me, but I think that's about as close as I'm going to get you today. Dr. Ivory, thank you, thank you very much for coming in. I'll return in just a moment with some closing comments. And who says there isn't politics in education? One footnote to all of this. In a meeting last week with Doug Rothwell, the former president and CEO of what was formerly called the Michigan Jobs Commission, 
He told me that until a court of law rules that what Henry Ford Community College is trying to do is illegal, the state will stand by the $5 million grant it awarded to that college. Obviously, we'll stay on top of this controversy and we'll update it with information and additional interviews as needed. Happy Father's Day. I'm Chuck Stokes. We'll be back next week with more newsmakers in the spotlight. Have a good week.